The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way we live and has severe negative impact on the global health and the economy. But it has highlighted that we need better preparedness to mitigate and prevent future pandemics. Everyone must contribute to this. Hi, my name is Wael Hussein. I'm a research group leader at the Institute of Medical Sciences, University of Aberdeen. My research expertise is in the discovery of biosynthetic enzymes from living organisms such as plants, fungi, bacteria, and algae. These enzymes are responsible for the production of fascinating biologically active natural products and toxins, and in doing so, they catalyze very challenging chemical transformations inside the body of the living organism in a very much greener way than the traditional chemical senses. I apply my expertise in chemical biology to produce engineered variants of these enzymes, so they can be produced in a high quantity and used in the lab as chemical reagents to make natural product like drugs. I'm particularly interested in enzymes that can modify the structures of peptides. Peptides are a short chain of amino acids linked together with peptide bond, and they need several structural modifications to turn them into useful drugs. Today, I will give you a virtual tour in my lab and explain to you how I apply my knowledge and expertise to help with the pandemic preparedness. The idea of the COVID project is to explore the ability of scorpion venom peptides to prevent the coronavirus entry to human cells. The new computational modeling, chemical senses, and the engineered enzymes we have developed to modify the venom peptide structures to turn them into potential antiviral drugs. Like any other drugs, these agents will need to go through the different stages of animal and clinical testing to ensure their efficacy and safety before they reach the market. These stages can take 10 to 20 years and cost millions of pounds. The project can be divided into several steps and started with collection of different scorpion species from the Egyptian desert. We benefit here from the fact that scorpions glow under ultraviolet light, so we use ultraviolet lamps to help us seeing the scorpions in the dark. The scorpions were fed fortnightly with worms in the lab of my collaborator Mohammed Abdurrahman at Suez Canal University in Egypt. Venoms were collected using a small electrical stimulation. This method is completely safe and not painful to scorpions. Venoms were then freeze-dried and shipped to my lab in Aberdeen. A venomous gland from each species were collected, preserved, and sent to us to extract and sequence the scorpion genetic material, which should give us enormous information on the types of toxins the scorpions can produce. The scorpion venoms are very complex mixture, containing hundreds of peptides and other materials. We start by separating this complex mixture into pure peptides using different chromatographic techniques. In these techniques, we inject this complex mixture in a column that contains a special material, and each component will pass through the column at a different speed. We use for this an advanced fully automated equipment that detects each component exiting from the column. We then use different techniques such as nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, which provide information on how atoms are connected in the peptide molecule, and mass spectrometry, which tells us the mass of the peptide to identify the structure of the individual peptides we isolate. We test these peptides for their ability to inhibit the virus entry to cells. To enter the cell, the virus spike protein must attach itself to a specific protein in our body. We immobilize this human protein on a sensor ship and then measure its binding to the viral spike protein in absence and the presence of our peptides. If our peptides are active, then the binding with spike protein is inhibited. 
The amount of purified from the biologically active venom peptides are in most cases very small in quantity and will not be ideal drugs. In order to convert them to drugs, we prepare much more using automated peptide synthesizer. We use computer modeling to understand how we could modify the structure of these peptides to make them better inhibitors to the virus entry. We then use a set of engineered biosynthetic enzymes to introduce the required chemical modifications into our peptides. We identify these enzymes by analyzing the genomic DNA sequence in different databases. Enzymes are produced in living organisms only if there is DNA contain a gene that could produce this particular enzyme. We use genetic engineering to transfer this gene into a bacterial strain that could be cultured in the lab. This strain becomes a factory that produces the required enzyme. In many cases, we modify the gene so it has a tag that makes the produced enzyme colored so we can see the level of enzyme production inside bacteria. We grow the cells in liquid media We lyse the cells and purify the enzymes from the lysate using chromatographic techniques but with different types of columns and the machines. Once some modifying enzymes are purified, we set up the enzymatic reactions with the peptides. After a few hours, we will verify the modified peptide products from the enzymatic reaction and test it in our biological screen. We learn from the results on how to enhance activity and decrease toxicity. As you can see, drug discovery is a long and expensive journey, but it is extremely rewarding, mainly because it alleviates patient sufferings and saves lives. I hope that you enjoyed this journey in my lab, and before you go, I would like to add that this work wouldn't have been possible without the contribution of my incredible research team, Alessandro, Claudia, and Nicholas. My collaborators, Elena, Caroline, Sergio, and Mohammed. The Egyptian students, Reham and Maryam, who make the scorpions. The funding from the Global Challenge Research Fund scheme, the EBSRC, the IBIC, and the University of Aberdeen. And of course, the staff at Green Bay Primary School Hub, who looked after my children during the lockdown to allow me to do this work. Thank you very much for visiting my lab today.